Hey gals, welcome back to Working Gals Guide. Thanks for tuning in one more time for another episode. I am so happy that you're here. I am so happy that you're listening. Um, today's episode is inspiring. I do have someone on who I actually reached out to for a couple of reasons. Her name is Taylor Vehe, and she's awesome, I do want to say. She does really resonate with the demographic that I think a lot of you are. So a lot of you I know that have written to me are either just finishing up college, just graduated, or are in college right now. And Taylor is just finished um, her freshman year. But the reason I wanted her on was because she's been able to do so much for her professional career already to this point. So first of all, she's been in the entertainment industry, which she's been in since a kid. I think she quotes that she's been in the entertainment industry when she um, actually was in her first film. I think it was grade four or around there. And from there, she's been dabbling in movies. She's been dabbling in TV shows all along. She currently still does balance college with actually filming as well. So she talks about that. Um, Also, alongside that, she's pursuing a degree in business, which is amazing. On the side, she's also doing social media. She's also trying to build her own brand up. So I thought, you know, I want to have someone on who's around the age of a lot of us listeners and is able to share her story about how she's been able to balance so much, including being an entrepreneur at such a young age, while still, you know, being able to do well in college, still be able to have her part-time job, which is, again, filming in TV and a lot of films as well. So some of the cool things that Taylor talks about is how she actually got her first break into the entertainment industry, working with Adam Sandler, who is, spoiler alert, apparently lovely, which I think we all could have assumed alongside hilarious. Also, she talks about um, a little bit of a deeper topic, which is some of the situations that she found herself in high school where, you know, maybe people weren't treating her that nicely because she was you know, pursuing things like the entertainment industry. So she gets into all of that and she's so open, so honest, and I love that about Taylor. So I really do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Before we hop in, I also want to say thank you for all the positive feedback from last week's episode. Jenny King was my guest last week. She, if you have not listened to last week's episode, is also extremely inspirational. She has had five internships at NBC, which as you can imagine, not an easy place to get a job, let alone five. Also, she works at Equinox as a fitness trainer. And I think that was the biggest piece of feedback I got actually was that people were amazed that someone her age was teaching at Equinox. And if you haven't listened, um, definitely recommend if you are interested in hearing her journey and how she actually got that job. I would say the over her underlying theme of last week's episode was perseverance, how Jenny really had to persevere and network to get all the different internships and jobs she's had and still has. All right, so without further ado, I do want to introduce today's episode, which is with, again, Taylor. And I do also want to remind you, if you're liking all these episodes, liking the podcast, make sure to follow on Instagram at Working Gals Guide. And second, make sure if you are listening on Apple and you are enjoying, leave a lovely review and rating if you're so inclined. All right. Thank you so much again for listening and I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to the Working Gals Guide podcast. And you know the deal. I'm here to interview people in all different careers, all different industries and chat about their journey and how they got there. I'm really here to help you get inspired and really help you find your dream job as well. So welcome to our podcast and thanks for tuning in. Hey gals, welcome back to Working Gals Guide. I'm here today with Taylor. Hey Taylor, how's it going? Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited that you're here as well. I mean, I've been listening to your podcast. I've been watching your YouTube. I've been watching the different TV shows and films that you're in as well. I mean, I'm so excited that you're here to share your story. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. I feel like things are kind of getting some momentum lately and I'm honored to be here. Of course. Yeah. I'm so excited for you to share your story. So before we hop into it, if you don't mind just giving us a bit of a background about you, a little bit of an intro. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So I just finished my freshman year of college at Bryant University. And so I guess now I'm a sophomore. It feels funny to say that. And I started in the entertainment world acting. And 
I still have some things going on in the acting world, but I've been kind of switching over more to social media with podcasting and YouTube. And so I'm really excited to see where that goes. And I like just the authentic version of myself on social media a little bit better than playing a character. So I'm really excited for that transition. And I'm sure I'll still do a little bit of acting here and there, but I'm more focused on the business side of um, my life too. And um, I guess that's not something I've talked about yet, but I have a few companies and some plans for more businesses. So yeah, yeah. that's a little intro. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited for you to share that just because I feel like, like you said, you do have a very authentic side to you that I see on your YouTube that I hear on your podcast. But then of course, you're also part of this entertainment world where you have a script, where you're given a character, where you have to like act a certain way. So I think it's so interesting that we can see you on both ends of that and kind of compare and contrast and still get the real you via, I guess, your social media, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, you mentioned that you just um, finished your freshman year. Congratulations, by the way. Um, very unconventional way to end the year though in quarantine, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. But what are you studying at Bryant? So I'm a digital marketing and entrepreneurship major. And I've gotten a little bit of backlash from adults, I guess, when I explain that because they're like, oh, what are you going to get a job in? And I kind of reiterate, well, I want to work for myself, so I don't really care what an employer thinks. But I'm really excited about that. I think that there's not a lot of entrepreneurship programs, and there's so many entrepreneurs out there. And I think that if you want to work for yourself, it just helps to have a little bit of that background. Of course, you don't need to major in that to start a business, but I think that it can be risky starting a business. So that knowledge is super exciting. And it wasn't the best way to end um, with the whole quarantine situation, but I'm really excited and um, thankful that I like my school so much and that I've missed it because I know some people um, were kind of fine with being at home. So I'm really excited to get back there and see what happens. Yeah, of course. And kind of touching on the point that you said earlier, um, like honestly, I think doing anything within business is super interesting. And it's also a very strong thing to pursue in terms of a degree. I think whether you're concentrating in digital marketing or HR or accounting, finance, whatever it is within business, you have an amazing, um, I guess, set of education behind you to pursue any career that you want to. I think business is so versatile. And if anyone's giving you crap about it, don't listen to them. <laughs> right. You know how well you're doing right now. So I think you're good to go. Um, but you did mention as well, and of course, I know your backstory, but you did, you know, start acting at a very young age. So yeah, I've always been like an entertainer. I've always loved to make people laugh. And my dad's been such a big supporter of it. And when I was maybe in like the first or second grade, I told him, I want to be on TV. I want to be in movies. And he said, I'll, I'll make that happen. And um, so my dad is kind of the type of guy that knows everyone. They call him Mr. Mayor in our town. And so we have a mutual connection with Adam Sandler. And so when we heard that a new movie was being filmed in Massachusetts, my dad called his friend, his friend called Adam. And so that was the start of things. So I wish I could tell people, oh, I took this acting class or mm -hmm. I got this agent, but it was really all about connections. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really powerful in itself. It's all about, you know, meeting as many people as possible and, you know, being kind to people and you never know what connection will bring something. So um, I think that that's kind of an interesting little way that I got started, but the movie was called That's My Boy, and it wasn't a super popular Adam, Adam Sandler movie, but I'm still excited that I got to be a part of it, and it was a high school scene, but I was in the fourth grade, and um, I remember when I got to set, they were like, why are you here? You're not in high school. You don't look the part. And I was like, oh, I have a connection. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So um, that was my first film. And we did two days. And just in the background of a few of the school scenes. But I really got a touch of the acting and got excited about it. And so I thank my dad because he really did keep his promise. He figured out how to get me in a movie. And that's kind of where the backlash started a little bit with people being judgmental or mean because... I said, oh, like, I'm in a movie, and I had to get dismissed a few days from school, um, 
and people didn't believe me and then when it came out they were like oh we can't even see you I'm like well I'm still in it so yeah of course. Um, I think that there's definitely been a little bit of resentment from others towards me about the acting but I think that that's with anything that people are trying to do there's always going to be a little bit of criticism so it just comes with the territory yeah for sure no that makes sense and it's honestly so cool that you have like any sort of connection to adam sandler i feel like he's one of those people that you always hear good things about in hollywood like i've never heard a bad word about adam sandler like i've only ever heard he supports his friends he has his friends in his movies he you know always hires like the people he loves around him and like never a bad word like he's almost on that level with like david spade i feel like david spade's another one you never hear a bad thing about so Mm -hmm. super cool and did you actually get to meet adam sandler when you were on set yeah i did so i met him for the first time in the fourth grade um, because we had this connection so he was actually playing basketball in the high school gym because we were filming in a school me and my dad just kind of snuck away uh, from set and said hi to him and explained you know we have the connection we're the people Um, and he was so nice you know shook my hand talked to me was making sure i was having a fun time on the set because it is long days people really don't realize i had to walk up and down the stairs as part of like a transition scene in the hallway and and I think I was walking up and down the stairs for like four hours. So that's like a lot that, that you don't really realize. That's a good workout. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so he was like, are you having fun? Like, so excited to have you. Super nice. Um, and I actually did another movie with him last summer. And he recognized me um, and said, oh, my God, you know, last time I saw you, you were a little kid. Say hi to mm-hmm. your family. And that was just so powerful. Like, I've only met him twice, and he remembered me like that. So, yeah, he's a great guy, and I'm so thankful that he kind of gave me a chance because he opened a lot of doors for me. That's awesome. And, I mean, after you did that first movie with him in the fourth grade, what was the process like after that? Did you have to get an agent? Did you start auditioning more? Did you take more acting classes? Like, Mm -hmm. did that really get the ball rolling for you in terms of wanting to really put your best foot forward in terms of entertainment? Yeah, so it was kind of one of those things where it was like, okay, I checked that box. Like, let's kind of experiment with some other things. So starting, that was in the fourth grade, and starting in the sixth grade, I started to write a book. So I kind of pivoted a little bit in terms of um, my ideas, because I've always seen myself as more of an entrepreneur than anything. And so I wasn't really chasing it, but if things came to me, Um, I would welcome that. So I did a few community theater type things just for fun and a few acting classes, but nothing too serious. And it wasn't until high school that I got another opportunity and decided to take it with the acting. So there was a little bit of a freeze, but I also think that, you know, those middle school years are, you're trying to figure your life out. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I think it was probably good that I just had some time off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. interesting. And then in terms of high school, did you pursue that opportunity for acting or, you know, did someone come to you and say, hey, like, I know you've done, you know, different stuff before, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you want to act in this? Yeah. So um, it was so unexpected. I had a little bit of a tough high school experience and I'm very open about that and it's pretty funny because now that you know things are kind of happening with like you asking me to be on this podcast Mm -hmm. and um whatnot like my when my Instagram hit 10k people that were mean to me in high school were asking me oh how did you get 10k Instagram Mm -hmm. followers it was like a little strange how that was happening but I just have always been the type of person that dreams big and wants to be successful but never at the expense of someone else I want to build everyone up together and um, I think that people just didn't get that they thought I wanted to be better than them or something and I I've always felt like I had to be defensive and um, you know try to explain myself and I'm, I'm not really sure what it was but I just felt not welcome so I did my first two years of high school and then there was a program at my high school junior and senior year where I could get my associate's degree at a community college. And I just was like, I feel like I don't fit in and maybe a change is good. Maybe it's not going to be much better, but I'm not really loving this experience. So let's do it. And so I did that, I applied and I got into that program and it was pretty lonely. Um, But I don't think the high school experience of 
feeling like I didn't belong and having to explain myself was that much better. So I kind of went from, uh, I don't know, being on the defensive to a little bit of isolation, but my classes were a lot more flexible because I had some online classes and in college, you know, you don't meet as much. So sometimes I didn't have school on Fridays, depending right. on what semester. So I got a call during that program that I was in asking me if I wanted to be in the society on Netflix. And I took that opportunity and it worked out pretty well. I didn't have to miss too much school because it was flexible and I got my feet back in the door with acting. And so I didn't really chase that either. It just kind of came to me. But after that, a few more opportunities um, I was starting to chase. So that kind of yeah. got the momentum rolling again. Yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, the society is a big one. Like we all know about it, whether we've watched it or not, we've seen it on Netflix flashing before our eyes when you log in. Um, so that's mm -hmm. a big one to be in. That's awesome. And how long was the filming process for that? Like how much school did you have to miss? Um, so I tried to be pretty strategic with that. And um, the way that that opportunity worked is you kind of can't get any big role if you're not very committed to giving up your life for extended periods of time. And that just wouldn't happen if I wanted to graduate high school on time. So I was just in the background for that, but it was nice because if I had a test, I could go to school. And if I just had classes that the notes were gonna be posted, I could skip school and film. So um, it was a little bit, I mean, tricky. It's not like I took time off of school. I just kind of had to play it by ear. And they asked me like once a week what my availability was. And then I just, depending on my school schedule, sent that in. But I was filming about two or three times a week. And they usually take Fridays and Saturdays off. So I, I was a little bummed out about that because Saturdays would have been a good day mm -hmm. since I didn't have school. Um, but we did that for a few months. I think the filming was September to December in um, 2018. Makes sense. So, or maybe it was 2019. Yeah. It was it was last year. It was my senior year of high school. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. awesome. No, that, that's amazing. And I mean, I feel like being on set with like such an amazing group of people because there's some big people on that, you know, there's a mm -hmm. lot of big people in that. And I think a lot of like up and coming stars as well. So mm -hmm. it must have been amazing to like kind of mingle with um, you know, people your age and just kind of connect with them and things like that. So it sounds like an amazing opportunity. Yeah, it was really exciting because, you know, at the community college, there wasn't much uh, socialization. I think a lot of people that were there maybe don't know what they want to do or they do know what they want to do, but they're at community college to save money. And so there wasn't much community going on. I feel like people just went to class and then bolted. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't really any making friends. And I was a few years younger than everyone. And then when I filmed, I was, you know, hanging out with kids my age. Mm -hmm. And we were there from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. sometimes. So we got really close. I have a really great group of friends that I met through there. And then the stars of the show were a little bit separate from the background, but we ate meals together. Mm -hmm. um, but in their downtime, they were kind of more working with their coaches and rehearsing lines and stuff so they weren't as involved with you know my friend group but it was a really cool experience and yeah a lot of up and coming stars I met yeah absolutely no it sounds super cool and you mentioned hours being like 4 a.m to 11 p.m is that mm -hmm. typical for filming tv and movies or is that kind of like crazy hours oh yeah that's typical mm -hmm. I mean a lot of times it's overnight shoots it's kind of wacky. I would sometimes have to get up at like 1.30 or 2 a.m. because it was so far away, depending on where we were filming. And um, you have to be there usually two hours before um, your, you know, call time of set starting. So you have to get your hair, makeup, wardrobe done. So sometimes I get there at 4 a.m. And then we'd start filming at like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then depending on if it was an outdoor scene, then you need to wait till the sun goes completely down. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's always crazy hours and usually very long days because they want to get as much done in the same outfits. Right. Um, so, yeah. No, that makes sense. And in terms of like hair and makeup, I'm just so curious. So like, mm -hmm. do you, you sit down in the chair, like someone like does everything for you? Like, yeah, is it like so, what we see and like what we kind of like imagine happens? Like you're in like a trailer and like someone just like kind of like gussying you up? Yeah. So I can walk you through that. So usually um, 
you park somewhere separate than when you're where you're actually filming for like privacy reasons. So they'd usually send me an email with what time I needed to be there and then the address. So I'd get to the parking lot and then there's a bus. So I would have a whole suitcase with um, hair, makeup, tools, because they kind of like to have your own stuff based on like skin tones and what you're mm -hmm. comfortable using. And then also they email you what the outfit vibe is. And then they ask you to bring three or four of your own outfits. And then, um, so I had to pack all of that the night before, try to get to sleep early, but it's hard when, you know, you, you go from staying up late to waking up early. Um, so once I got to the parking lot, we'd get on the bus and go over to wherever we're filming and you go to holding and first you check in and a lot of times you have to bring identification or paperwork if it's the first day so there's a little bit of paperwork to sign in and then you get hair and makeup done and sometimes if there's a rush or if there's a bunch of people they just say do your own hair and makeup and we'll check it and then sometimes if it's a little bit more of a dressy scene or they need things very particular they'll do it uh, but that's always a really fun part. You know, you feel kind of pampered. Yeah, um, totally. And then um, you go and put on a few of your outfits. And then if they like them, they'll approve them. And sometimes they might say, oh, we need to switch out this part of your outfit because there's a lot of um, lighting and camera things that you don't always think about, like some colors they don't like, some patterns they don't like. So after you get approved, then you just kind of hang out and sit tight. And there's actually a lot of waiting. So that made it easy for me to do some schoolwork. Like if I was okay. going to miss school, mm -hmm. I could kind of do it while I was just sitting around waiting for all the other moving pieces to be aligned. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you can only imagine how many moving pieces there are. Like there's the lighting, there's recording, editing, there's all the different actors like trying to get everyone dressed and ready on time. Like it's such a huge mm -hmm. production it's phenomenal mm -hmm. that people can like go out and like manage all of that. Like, it's so interesting to me, like almost like the business side of it and just mm -hmm. like making sure everyone's organized is so intriguing. Like I wish like I had like a more behind the scenes of that. Yeah, it is really interesting. And it really makes sense why films are so expensive because I'll look around sometimes and be like, there are 200 people in this room and we've been sitting here for two hours and they're paying us yeah. to do nothing. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of inefficiency just because there's so many moving parts. Yeah, exactly. You know, it sounds crazy, but like, honestly, also a, such a cool experience. Like, I mean, even just you talking about it, it seems so exciting. Um, mm -hmm. But I do want to talk about like, you know, some of the rewarding parts of being within the entertainment industry as well, because I guess some of the challenges is probably the long days, you know, having to like drive to set, like get crazy hours and then, you know, miss a bit of college as well. But what mm -hmm. are some of the more rewarding parts and like, what do you love about being in films, being on TV? Yeah. So, um, I love the people I meet. I'm such a people person. Like mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite things. You just meet people from all different backgrounds and everyone's trying to help each other. So that's really cool because you know, you might run into someone that's like, oh, well, I'm filming on this set tomorrow. They just email that they need a few more people if you want me to forward that to you. So there's a lot of like networking collaboration, which is awesome. And then there are some people that are just doing this for fun. Um, they might be like, you know, in their 30s, 40s, have their own career, but they're just, you know, taking a day off and trying something mm -hmm. new. Or there might be people who are really chasing this. Mm -hmm. So I like to hear people's stories and that kind of thing is really rewarding. And then when we're filming, I think it's so interesting to just see the creative process of how it all comes together. Because sometimes I'll be in a scene and I'm like, I don't get where this is going or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that this is going to work. And then I see it on TV and I'm like, oh, wow, that looks awesome. Like, I can't believe that I was, you know, doubting it. So mm -hmm. I think that the whole creative process is really amazing. And just that we live in a society where we can tell a story and have real people in it and really bring it to life is amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I know no one listening to this can see you right now. We are absolutely glowing just like talking about it. I uh. love it. I can just see how passionate you are about it. It's awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I do want to talk about some of the other things you have going on too, because really you do have a lot of things in your portfolio right now, in addition to college, in addition to acting. You mm -hmm. also have your YouTube, you also have your podcast. So when did you start both of those? So I've always wanted to do YouTube, but of course I was nervous about what people were mm -hmm. thinking. Um, and I'm the type that 
you know, everyone says, oh, Taylor doesn't care what people think of her. And I'm like, well, not at the expense. I'm not going to change what I'm doing because someone doesn't like it. But of course, I want to be liked. And um, so for a while, I kind of thought about it. And then when I was doing the community college program, I'm like, who am I hiding from? No one in these classes even knows. And, you know, the kids from high school barely see me. So let's just do it. And so I started doing that, but I never really took it super seriously. I just kind of did it whenever I had fun, whenever I had an idea, and I wasn't pushing myself. And in these last few months, I've kind of been ramping it up just because I've had more time Mm -hmm. and I've been seeing momentum. And I think that when you start to see a little bit of results, it makes it so much easier to keep going. And so I've been doing that for two years now. And I started my podcast a year ago because I like to tell stories and I like to um, talk, but I don't love sit down videos. I don't like watching them and I don't like editing them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of needed a medium that was just simple. There's not really any editing that goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's usually just me sitting down talking for an hour about a topic. Yeah. So it's really low key. It's just like a kind of like a FaceTime vibe. Um, so that's what that's all about. No, it's awesome. And I definitely like understand like the difference between editing YouTube versus a podcast. Cause of course, mm-hmm. like I have my podcast, I don't have a YouTube, but I don't know if you know, Brooke Michio. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Brooke, I had her on my podcast, um, a while ago now, but I asked her the difference, like what's harder, the YouTube or the podcasting. And honestly, the YouTube, you mean you have to dress nicely cause you're being, you know, filming or mm-hmm. you're filming yourself. You have to really sit down and edit so many different aspects, including the audio, including the visual. And of Mm -hmm. course, just like putting it all together takes so much longer than a podcast. Podcasting requires a little bit of editing, but it's nowhere the extent of a YouTube video. So I definitely understand the difference there. And I mean, like you mentioned, you know, you like storytelling and I mean, I've listened to your podcast. You're an amazing storyteller. Like it really hooks you and you tell the stories, you know, brilliantly. So I think you do a really good job on both. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I love listening to like a very clean edited podcast, mm-hmm. but I just don't have the time to, mm-hmm. you know, like take out any ums or likes that I'm saying. And also that's just kind of what happens naturally. So yeah. I usually just do like a few takes of, you know, three different clips and just whatever comes mm-hmm. out, comes out. So that's kind of the podcast vibe, but the YouTube yeah. is a little bit more edited. Yeah, no, I think it's good too, because I think as well, like you mentioned, like earlier in our in our episode, like this is the more like real, raw, authentic you versus like the acting is like the curated character that you're playing. So mm-hmm. I think it's really nice to get like the absolute like raw you versus like the you that we're seeing like on TV, for example. So yeah. it's a good balance and it's a really nice creative outlet as well. Yeah, I really like it. I, it just feels like more my story and not yeah. someone else's. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I know you have big plans for yourself. You're so business minded. Um, you know, like what are your goals for yourself? Like, what do you see yourself doing? Um, I know you said you want to own your own companies, but what kind of companies mm-hmm. would those be? What kind of work would you want to do? You know, pa- post graduation. Mm-hmm. So I've always had so many business ideas. I remember I didn't like to play anything pretend. I wanted to play restaurant with a menu and prices. And so my mom always jokes, like, I, don't, I didn't know what was up with you back then, but now it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always just been fascinated by the whole business mindset, business side of things. And I think a lot of people have really good ideas, but don't always know how to go about it and don't know how to take a risk or talk to people. And so what I'd like to do is kind of merge my social media and my love for business and help people that have a good idea, but are are struggling on the business side, still be successful and maybe make it into like a vlog series um, or some sort of, you know, giving them marketing on the social media side of my own platform and then helping them be successful and maybe taking a percentage of their business. Um, So kind of like a shark tank type vibe, but not as I'm going to write a check and like send you off, like very hands-on and um, involved. So Mm -hmm. that's what I really see myself doing. No, that's awesome. And I think it's a good idea too, because you're so personable. Like we just met, but I feel like we're connected. Like you're so easy to talk to and just have a conversation with. So I think you're going to thrive doing that for sure. I mean, I don't think I'd see you having any issues like connecting and helping someone out. I think that, you know, it'll be a great adventure when you do start that. Are you planning to start that, you know, once you graduate 
are you thinking of starting it a bit earlier, maybe during college, maybe next year, or the year after? Yeah, so I've been trying to focus on the social media of, you know, my own personal brand mm -hmm. and then kind of dabbling and helping other people. But my school is so business mindset mm -hmm. um, with everything. So that's really nice. I've met so many great connections there. And, you know, even when it's Friday and Saturday night and I'm having fun and enjoying the weekend, I'm still like meeting people that I'm networking with and they're telling me about their business ideas. And I'm like, this is so crazy. I'm at a party and I'm being pitched right now. Like, yeah. I'm so happy that I go to such an amazing school that's so supportive. And I've had such a different change from high school mm -hmm. to college that I've also been very open about. Like, I got to college and my roommate was like, how do you know everyone? How does everyone always tell me that they met you? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, it was just, I was kind of shocked because I was, you know, very similar person, but I was just received so differently. And so I really thrived there and I'm excited to get back hopefully in the fall. Yeah. But I also think that I have four um, or 14 meals a week and a roof over my head when I'm at college. So now is really the time to take a risk and take a chance. So I want to start doing that more over the summer and next year um, and networking with some kids from my school that have their own businesses. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I'll have to chat business with you too. We're going to have to do some separate calls after this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. Yeah, no, that's awesome though. I'm so glad that, you know, people are already like seeing the potential that you have and pitching things to you, wanting to get your advice. I mean, any, I guess, you know, any opportunity you have to give advice and just help out will really build your brand, build your network, like you're saying, and really set you up to succeed moving forward. So that's awesome. Um, but I know we're, uh, you know, coming Thank close you. to our time. Before we do wrap it up, I have two final questions. So the first one is, who is the coolest um, celebrity or person in the entertainment industry that you've ever met? Adam Sandler aside. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I think Catherine Newton um, okay. on the society was mm -hmm. really cool to meet. Um, and well, actually I have two. Um, so she was really cool because I didn't really know who she was when I started to work with her. And then after I filmed the society, I saw her on Big Little Lies with Reese Witherspoon. And so that was kind of cool because I kind of watched her grow in her career. Um, and then the other person is China Ann McLean. And I'm in a movie with her coming out in the ha in um, the Halloween time. I don't know exactly when, but that's going to be on Netflix. And I actually play her friend. And she was so nice. People were asking us if we've been on set with each other before. And we were just like, no, but we're just friends. Like automatically, we're just joking around. And I was nervous to work with her because it was so... Um, close up and personal and we were talking and having to hold hands and run around and um, she made me feel like we'd been friends forever and that was really nice because she's been so successful in her career and she doesn't know who I am so just seeing someone be so humble and kind was so inspiring and that's how I always want to um, be if I have any success I never want someone to be um, you know intimidated by me or scared to say hi or anything like that so she's um, super cool no, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it seems like both those gals are very accomplished and very cool. And I know both of them. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. When I say no, I mean, I've watched them on TV. I don't <laughs> actually know them. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, so my last question, what's the best piece of career advice you've ever been given in your life, whether it's to do with the business or entertainment, really anything at all? Um, so I will have to quote my dad on this one again. He's been such a big inspiration for me and we're so similar and he always tells me you know never call someone up on the phone if you need something always go to them in person look them in the eye and tell them whatever it is mm -hmm. and that's just such a good technique I think we're so used to you know laying back and emailing or calling and it's really easy to get ignored or um, have someone not follow up, but if you, you know, tell someone, if you feel passionate about someone and they can see it in your eyes, um, I think that you're going to be so much more successful with anything you want and really not taking no for an answer. I'm a big believer in, okay, if plan A doesn't work, let's try a few more and before we give up. So I think that whatever people want to do, if they are confident and believe in themselves first, you can get other people on board. 
Yeah, definitely. That's huge advice. And I love that. I love that. Um, both of those pieces of advice for sure. Um, Thank you. Great. So to wrap things up, where can people find you? What's your YouTube? What's your Instagram? What are you going to be in coming up and where can they find those shows? Yeah, perfect. So my Instagram is Taylor Vahey, T-A-Y-L-O-R-V-A-H-E-Y. Same thing on YouTube. And my podcast is called Tales of Tales. Um, and that's spelled like T-A-L-E-S for the first tales. And then the second tales is like my name, T-A-Y-L-S. Um, and that's kind of a nickname that my dad gave me. And so I've always been good at storytelling. So I'm like, okay, that's a clever little ring. Um, so that's the podcast. And then coming up, I am on Hightown. It's a Stars Network show. And that's actually filmed on Cape Cod, where I'm from. So that's really cool. And that's out right now every week. Uh, and then on Netflix, I'm going to be in Hubie, Hubie Halloween, which is the Adam Sandler mm-hmm. movie. And so that's exciting and coming out around Halloween. And I'm so excited to be a part of this. Yeah, thank you so much. So thank you so much for coming on. I am so pumped that you're here. Um, and I'm gonna have to have you back um throughout your college yeah. years so I can see and like check in with what you're doing. You can share your story and how you're progressing. Um, it's been lovely to chat with you and uh so glad you could come. Yeah, thank you so so much.